all this boasting of spiritual authority, spiritual privilege, spiritual uniqueness, we see happening in the church. And from obviously flawed people. They are liars, they are cheats, they are uh, fornicators, they are adulterers, they are idolaters. That means they are practicing idol worship, fetishism in the church. So you see that this man has no discipline, has no moral compass, has no real integrity. But God is using his strength. We must be very careful. Very careful, Pentecostals and Charismatics. When you see people supposedly used by God, but who have obvious, obvious clearly character flaws. Character flaws. Obvious. The man is sleeping with all the ladies. Having sex with all the girls in the church. We cannot say, but he's anointed. We have to know. Maybe there is a small group of people that has to be rich. Yes, God is using them, but he's not endorsing them. And the supposed miracles happening in their lives is not an endorsement of their character. The charismatic church. We see so much power. And maybe that is what all of you see. But I see so much danger. And so much self-destruction. So much dissipation of confidence. More and more the congregation and the public is losing confidence in us. They are losing confidence in men of God, in clergymen. If you call yourself a prophet, it's almost like... A title meaning con man. Ebushia answer na seven December ebe duno di ene de besino ne nyesi ewe because Osha we team ni wa kame ne apere apere ya ekosu between asofona e ya sefem na e ya hajin ni njana e ya se. Some few days ago, and I am a part John Dramani, and invited Ghana as of one penny for as a matter of fact, a few of them, or the Omoya apostles, prophets, evangelists, and or invite to a bar meeting. I say, Ebini, Dr. Us Bempa, Yehu Bernard, El Bernardo Honmo, any as of workers, Yahoo, Lighthouse, Sofo by Action Chapel, Sofo by any as of who a Kuda Mahodo, a buyer. Now, program, I say, and now, Mama, John Dramani, Bunko to Jane, no more. A bomb pie man, or who name you a young couple? The old and a dumb or man can now obey dear my enemy. A pretty say, a to me be a to me, see an old one. And I'm not sure, or my ever calling you. And there and a washer, and there and a walker. What in Timon? Oh, my Akuna Cassius. Oh, yes, Dimo. Amen. It looks almost like it was a planting because who knew, sir, if they were to pray for him, he would kneel down. So they brought a pillow. And a pillow is in a paper cotoy and a mob bombay. Edemano. Now, a mob bombay in the year, and a soft foot bumper, and your microphone or can't say, Oh, Yamia can't change the sea, sir. Or do a minor, I shall join Dramani, Mahama, and Sir, and then I come up in tea. Catch a mini and num or penny, Nakoma Papenti, Unyamia Sadu, or may I shall be said. Be beant, Miss Yano. Amen. A busia, a free sadana, also be a pack as I say, when name come will be our old bonnet, or so be present to me a present or Ghana, a G or no Nensa, a woman answer. Yet the way Cotton Chair. Answer na sa program in the course no. Ye nya information the free at Bishop Nicola Danka William Akache. Ah, or no a neba bako. Edi information about two social media say. Some months ago, or te say, ne wapa ne asofobi ni bidin komo ofonso. E na ne wapa etre mu se, gana ye e kristu for mine. Inte nya di ya ombe pene. Anase ombe ye enche hain. Ashe ama kremoni abedi o mine so. Inte ne waso mu ye di waso mu ye biya. No me ti mi asesan ni ema. Ebushin ya man fwo etre se, e ye san sen semono. 
and the conference are meeting by because a software you invite you and you few of them now so as for no it is believed say they are ndc people bernard l bernard edi can shen kom ama ndc dida and a software also remember and so many mpp for no issues are ne kase any much they say and sure mpp mba bemo he was part of the team and a few other men of God also. We are doing chara and go for day, but after so my years, some careful observations. Nebusia and now many will echo say, Yeah, Papa Doctor Mesa Otabo, HSA, a sophon in the year, new Musuba and Bia, or Moody War, May Mono, a yane as a film, a yare war, the Yenim Guasa Crampo say, a beam po becas or me a Christopher, and now Musuba and a sophon be a den in the nitty. Ebusia, many and terminal good tea, dear Papa. Dr. Mesa Otabo, Edibetua Bonte, now answer no. Subscribe on page, you name me at Domanaso. Send me a preview answer that will say, Betty Maka, name my reference, say, Uber follow me, or all the other social media platforms. So, Nina A2 Margin H. Make the mistake to say so, we should imitate Samson and, and learn from his ways and go and go and do what Samson did <laughs> and go and lie on a lady's lap and tell her all your secrets. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you, Mr. Samson? What's wrong with you, Mr. Samson? And, the, and when he's do, the, the thing, the thing about Samson that I can get, you try it once. And the lady calls the Philistines. So you should by now say that, hey, we are in trouble. Oh. If I tell my secret, I'm in trouble. He does it twice. He does it until now. The Bible says now he can't stop. So he says it. So you see that this man has no discipline has no moral compass, has no real integrity, but God is using his strength. We must be very careful, very careful, Pentecostals and Charismatics, when you see people supposedly used by God, but who have obvious, obvious clearly character flaws. Character flaws. Obvious. The man is sleeping with all the ladies, having sex with all the girls in the church. We cannot say, but he's anointed. We have to know. Maybe there is a small group of people that has to be rich. Yes, God is using them, but he's not endorsing them. And the supposed miracles happening in their lives is not an endorsement of their character. Because sometimes, you know, I, I hear pastors preach, speaking and say, if I be a man of God, who are you? I mean, what, what, what are they saying? You think God answers you because you are a man of God? God answers us because of his mercy. You think you have impressive credential if I me it be a, a prophet, if I be a man of God. Shut up and sit down. You are just another human being that God picks somewhere by the roadside and is using. Shut up and sit down. All this boasting of spiritual authority, spiritual privilege, spiritual uniqueness, we see happening in the church. And from obviously flawed people. They are liars, they are cheats, they are uh, fornicators, they are adulterers, they are idolaters. That means they are practicing idol worship, fetishism in the church. And somehow we think, oh, there, there is also a grace. I'm happy you said grace. Because grace is God's covering for your foolishness. If you are a pastor here, go to school. For those of you who are older already, you're, 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 you're past helping. We'll take you like that. <laughs> we'll take you like that. <laughs> and and, and, uh, and, uh, and you, we'll, we'll ease you off. We'll take you like that. All of you who are older will take you like that. But those who are coming, we are talking about the next generation, influencing the those who are coming, these generations who, if you sense God has called you, you have to go to seminary. You have to.
If you are in your 20s, you feel God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 30s, God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 40s, God has called you, go to seminary. If you are in your 50s, we'll hold you like that. We'll hold you like that. 50, 60s. We'll, we'll just manage with you and ease you out. May you do no harm to the next generation. <laughs> May you do no harm to the next generation. But we'll hold you like that. The charismatic church. We see so much power. And maybe that is what all of you see. But I see so much danger. And so much self-destruction. So much dissipation of confidence. More and more the congregation and the public is losing confidence in us. They are losing confidence in men of God, in clergymen. If you call yourself a prophet, it's almost like a title meaning con man. How can we take such a sacred title that Isaiah had, that Jeremiah had, that Ezekiel had, that Daniel had, all of these great people? We have so commoditized it and so cheapened it that now this noble title almost means a con man. Because there's no regulatory body. Everybody picks titles as they want and parade with it. Bishop. When I was growing up, if somebody was a bishop, we believed that they were a no noble person in the clergy. Because the churches which had bishops in Ghana were two, mainly. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church. And their bishopric was based on the diocesan system. The Catholic Church, as, as far as I can remember when I was growing up, had I think about six or so dioceses in, in Ghana. So six bishops. The Anglican Church had similar, probably less, maybe six bishops. Later, the Catholic Church expanded its dioceses. I think now they have probably about 20-something dioceses in, in Ghana, about 20-something or whatever bishops. Anglican Church, similar. Then Charismatics and Pentecostals say, we won't spoil there. <laughs> we take whatever is noble, apostle. We have made apostle cheap. We've made prophet cheap. Then we say, bishop, now it's your turn. And we have desecrated it so that the title bishop has no nobility attached to it again. Any person with three lizards is a bishop. And if in all of these things you don't see self-destruction, then your, your powers of deduction are very weak. If you can't see destruction, can you imagine in Ghana where everybody who has never been to law school is called a lawyer? I get up, I say, hey, I'm a lawyer. From today, I'm lawyer, so and so and so. I'm architect, so and so. I'm doctor, so and so. Can you imagine what will happen to the health profession? Or the legal profession? Or the judiciary? I get up, I say, uh, hey, well, I, I'm able to decide people's matter. From now, I'm judge. I'm chief justice, Mensa Otabu. <laughs> Can you imagine what will happen to the legal profession or the pharmaceutical profession or to any profession, engineering? Just think of it. And that's what has, is happening. We've taken the noble characters, the noble titles, the noble offices that people toil for to build value and integrity for. Charismatics attack it and dissipate it. And when they have dissipated it, now he will go and call himself chief bishop, major bishop, 
major prophet. I mean, it's as if our nonsense is not enough. We have to, we have to invent new nonsense. And wearing all kinds of attires. You know, the Catholics, they have their attire. Anglicans have their attire. Protestants, mainline Protestants, only wear the main clerical uh, collar, and that's about it. There is no episcopacy, and they don't uh, escalate. And charismatic say we won't spoil there. We saw bishops wear maxi skirt, so we say we wear maxi skirt, and we won't do the maxi skirt well. We we'll go and do all kinds of things, and then we do a hat, and we do feathers in it, and, and you wonder what what is the meaning of it? Is this is nice? And you see, charismatic. I see sometimes people wearing these fancy dresses. They say they are bishop wearing fancy dresses. Fancy dresses. What is the meaning? What is the theological significance? What is the philosophy? What is the historicity of it? How does it work with your self-proclaimed beliefs? It's nice. It will make you powerful. Years ago, years ago, about 30 years ago, I met a friend of mine who had just been made a bishop. So I saw him and said, hey, Ujaf, you are not a bishop. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. And I saw a cross in, around his neck and he's put the, the cross on his, in his pocket. I said, oh, okay, you are married to the church now. You are wearing a ring. You are married to the church. Now, you know, the Catholics, they don't marry. The, their, their, their wife is the church. They are married to the church forever. So the church is always on their heart. You, your wife is on your heart. So the, the thing you are wearing itself, its significance is lost on you. Yeah, somebody say polygamy. You've married a second wife. <laughs> So, so he's wearing all of this. I said, why are you doing this? Have you church, studied church history? Do you understand where clergy garments came from? Do you understand why they do so and so? Do you understand why they hold this and all of that and all? Does it work with your own theology as a Pentecostal? Is it consistent? You say, hey, my brother, this thing to open doors. It to open doors. To open doors. I said, what does? He says, now, since I became this, you know, they call for big meetings for bishops and I'm also invited. And the Ghanaian society is that, you know, because our society is unregulated, the media too, the media just use titles by heart. A herbalist is a doctor. And all kinds of people. So, they, they don't even discern and help to correct the mistakes of the society they amplify it so at this point in time pastor Isud, i don't know when i look into the future of charismatism i see self-destruction you know it's one thing i like about the catholic and the anglican church because the pastors the clergy they are learned to hand handle they are trained to handle confidential information because people go for confession and they tell the priest stuff and the priest has to handle that information confidential if it was charismatics and people did confession <laughs> we'll have prayer topics we'll have prayer topics we have preaching topics we have uh, insinuation topics <laughs> we have we have control manipulation remember the thing you told me remember the thing you told me if i tell your wife right now come and sow seed <laughs> thank god nobody comes for confession to charismatics
you have to learn to handle confidential information and what god shows you is confidential information but we blast it sometimes humiliate people in public the lord showed me this about you and we describe people's health challenges publicly embarrassing situations that they wish nobody hears god told you about it and you feel that the best way is to announce it publicly the sad thing is even after we have publicly disgraced them there is no healing the pentecostal charismatic church is on a one-way highway drive to self-destruction and it's because generations after generations are using the example of the previous generation as theirs they like they are like the man who prayed with a cat and generations come and think the cat is more important than their prayer if you are a pastor here go to school if you sense god has called you you have to go to seminary now if you believe that anybody who carries the title apostle or anybody who carries the title prophet is the one jesus uh, paul is talking about then you would have a church culture where everybody is calling himself an apostle and everybody is calling himself a prophet why because they want to be seen as the foundation pillars of the church uh, uh, to give themselves the authority to 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 determine what happens in the church and uh, i think for most ghanaians charismatic ghanaians at this point in time a lot of people believe the apostles and the prophets that the bible is talking about here refers to people who are called apostles and prophets so these days it is very easy to find people called apostles and prophets somebody starts uh, yesterday he was an unbeliever today he gets born again uh, tomorrow he attends uh, pastor eastwood's conference and pastor eastwood prays on him and uh, lays hands on him and the next day after that uh, he is called apostle and 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 uh, he he has jumped everything you know he's just apostolated himself uh, or somebody is praying and he sees a mosquito in a dream or he sees a lizard or he sees something he calls himself a, prof a prophet um, and because it is a self-help environment when we say something is self-help it means it has no process everybody is helping himself uh, if you want to take the title nobody can stop you uh, if you want to say you're apostle, nobody can stop you. So we have all kinds of things called apostle and all kinds of things called prophet. But what did the scripture mean when it says the apostles and the prophets are the foundation on which the cornerstone has erected his church? And yesterday I explained what this text means. The apostles here are basically the 12 apostles of jesus christ the 12 apostles of jesus christ and later including paul that is it it is a closed group it is not an open-ended group and a self-evolving group it is a closed group and that's it the foundation on the cornerstone is the apostles of jesus christ those who were with jesus directly physically during his earthly ministry and those who encountered him supernaturally and that's only one man paul who encountered christ post resurrection and the existing apostles of jesus christ who were with him physically gave paul the right hand of fellowship and recognized that although he was not with them in galilee when they were with jesus they ac acknowledged that paul has had an encounter with jesus that qualifies him to be numbered amongst them as 
the original apostle. Now, why is this important? This is important, pastors, because apostles have got canonical authority. Canonical authority. What do we mean by canonical authority? It means that their writings and their teachings are recognized as scripture. Their writings and teachings recognized as scripture. And that is why the letters of Paul were recognized as scripture. The letters of Peter recognized as scripture. The letters of John recognized as scripture. Because the apostles had canonical authority. The other group that had canonical authority is the prophets. And what does it mean when the Bible talks about prophets here? It doesn't mean any prophet existing today. They are not included in this definition. It doesn't mean any prophet that has existed in time past. And it doesn't mean any prophet who existed in the New Testamental era. This prophet here refers specifically to the canonical prophets. That is the prophets who wrote scripture. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, up to Malachi. These are canonical prophets. And they are the foundation stone around which the church is built. So, why is that so? And I said that yesterday. The, uh, the prophets of old pointed Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming. The apostles tell us he has come. That's all. He is coming. He has come. So these two tell us the rock is coming. And then the other says the rock has come. The Messiah is coming. The Messiah has come. The Messiah is coming. This is who the Messiah is. That is what, this is what he came to do. This is what we have to do to believe in him. Those two. The Old Testament prophets who prophesied about the coming of Jesus and the apostles who witnessed the life of Jesus and point us to him, they are the foundations on the rock. Every other person who is called apostle or prophet is peripheral. That means he is like the cat in the prayer room. He is like the throwing of hands and the walking of the prayer person. It, it, he is peripheral but not central to the Christian message. Because the Christian message is Christ Jesus, the apostles of the New Testament and the prophets of the Old Testament. What they said about Christ, that is the center of Christianity. Now, why am I saying this? I am saying this because if we are not careful, we forget about the center and focus on the extra. And we can invent all kinds of things outside of what is central to the Christian faith. The Christian faith is not defined by you or I. The Christian faith is defined by what the prophets said and what the apostles said. So my job, your job, the job of every Christian is you have to go and study. What did the prophets say about the coming Messiah? What did the apostles say about the Messiah who has come? That knowledge, that understanding is the basis on which we build our faith. 